Hey guys, Megaz here. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pistol that I ran as my sidearm for about 6 months. It's an update to an almost identical pistol that I ran for about a year prior to that, so this particular platform has been well and truly put through its paces. Now let's get up close and personal with the WE Big Bird E-Force. The WE Big Bird E-Force is a variant of the classic WE Big Bird, which is a WE take on the Smith & Wesson M&P. This version has a very salient arms aesthetic. The WE Big Bird pistols have a reputation for being solid well-built pistols that don't break the bank, coming in at around £89 to £99. Pounds. Is the E-Force just an aesthetic update to a classic pistol, or does it improve the performance? Let's take a look at all of the details, and then take it to the chrono, range, and out to the field. The E-Force series is available in several different versions. I mean, hell, scratch that. It is available in at least 30 different versions, and that's not much of an exaggeration either. All of these variants look very similar to the Salient Arms Custom M&Ps, which is an aesthetic that I'm not overly fond of. They come in two base colorways, and that's black and tan, with two variations of the slide. The solid version, which is the one we'll be taking a look at, and a version with weight reducing cutouts in the top, above the barrel, and on either side. The slides come in two colorways of the cutout version, which is black and silver, and three in the standard version, black, silver, and gold. Both versions are available with either silver or gold barrels. There are also select fire variants with an external safety device that allows the user to select a fully automatic fire mode. All of the above variants are also available in a compact form factor, the S-Bird. Today we're looking at the non-select fire tan and black variant with a non-cutout slide. Let's take a closer look at all of the details. The frame is very similar to the classic M&P but features much more aggressive stippling which covers both sides of the grip, the front and back strap and along the side of the frame. It also extends to the front and lower sections of the trigger guard. The back straps are removable. In the box are three different sizes of two colorways. With this version came three tan and three pink, which is nicer than the gold slide on some of the pistols. But when I used this as my main pistol, to emphasize the two-tone look, I switched out for a small black backstrap from my previous M&P. Both colorways come in small, medium, and large to allow the user to custom fit the pistol to their hand size. To remove the backstrap, with the magazine removed, rotate the heel of the grip 90 degrees counterclockwise and then pull it downwards and out of the grip. This unlocks the backstrap, allowing it to be removed. At the front end of the frame is a 20mm Picatinny rail for the addition of lights, lasers, grips, grenade launchers, or tactical ball sacks. The magazine release is very prominent and features some stippling and can be removed and replaced onto the right hand side of the frame for a left handed shooter. To keep with the ambidextrous theme, the slide locks are featured on both sides of the frame. The only trademarks you will find on the frame are the WE logo on either side of the bottom of the grip and a unique serial number on the right hand side. The takedown lever is on the left hand side of the frame. Now to remove the slide, first pull it all the way to the rear, lining the takedown lever up with a small groove on the slide. Turn the lever 90 degrees clockwise and then pull the slide free from the front of the pistol. This allows access to the hop unit which is just below the chamber. The trigger is very different from the classic M&P and is silver in colour with a red two-stage safety. On the left hand side it has the WET markings and another WE logo on the right side. I found this trigger less responsive than the original with a longer reset and a spongier pull. The slide is CNC machined aluminium and features serrations to aid sweaty mouth breathers in chambering around. The serrations are aggressive and aesthetically pleasing and run the length of the upper side of the slide, along both sides at the rear and the lower front of the slide. There are no M&P or Smith & Wesson trademarks anywhere on the slide. The real pistol's calibre markings however, which are 9mm, are featured prominently on the chamber. The outer barrel is a roughly polished silver on this particular version, it's also available in that tacky gold looking alternative. Personally, I would have preferred a black barrel. As with most WE pistols, the outer barrel features a thread so an adapter can be installed, meaning a tracer or suppressor can be added to the pistol. The sights on the E-Force are a significant upgrade from the original M&P 
and feature both red and green fiber optics. The 28 round standard magazine is metal in construction with a plastic base plate featuring the WE logo and the gas inlet valve. The feed lips are plastic and held in place by a small pin which I found with excessive use can start to come loose. Replacement magazines are available at around £18 and extended 50 round and CO2 options are also available. Now we've seen all of the features, let's take the E-Force to the Chrono test to see how it performs. In this test I was using the Ace Tech Chrono with 0.25g BBs and Nuprol 4.0 gas which is all I had to hand at the time of testing. The results linger in the mid 200s which for a sidearm is probably more than enough. For the accuracy test we first ran 0.25g BBs from 6mm ammo and again Nuprol 4.0 gas, firing at an A4 size target around 30 feet away. A Ditec Mini Tracer was installed using the WE thread adapter and 25 gram tracers from Ace Tech were used. The accuracy at 30 feet is very good. If you're playing CQB, let's face it, this is probably the average range you will be engaging players with this pistol. So if you're firing at a man-sized target, you're more than likely going to score a hit. As with all of my reviews, I like to get out in the field with the gun before I give my opinion. As I mentioned earlier, this particular pistol was my personal sidearm for some time. So, here's a short compilation of gameplay footage showing it in action. What? Under my feet. Cool. Red, 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 red. 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 Oh, fucking. Oh, sorry, man. White in the room. Is that? My thoughts on the E-Force. I ran this pistol up until the day I picked up the ICS BLE Alpha. If that pistol didn't exist, I'd probably still be running this as my sidearm. It is well built, performs really well, even in the average to crappy British weather, and hasn't let me down. If you like the MNP and want something a little different, this could be a way to go. The E-Force updates make it a standout from the crowd pistol without being too garish, and less of course you do 
go for that really nasty gold slide version. But don't do that, it's just not nice at all. You can see the review of the original WE Big Bird in the end cards along with a playlist of all the other review videos I've put together. If this review was helpful to you or you just enjoyed it, hit like. If you have any questions about the MMP, leave them down below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and that notification button for more reviews, gameplay and other airsoft shenanigans. Thanks for watching, I'm Magaz and as always, the air may be soft but our balls are hot.